as the Honda CRF300L has just come out, I'm sure that there'd be a lot of CRF250Ls for sale or the rallies or whatever. Uh, hopefully they come down in price. At the moment, they're selling for quite high for a second-hand dual sports that's, you know, been dropped and probably been dragged through the hedge forwards and backwards and the backwards again. So I thought I'd put this little video together showing you what to look for when checking out a used Honda CRF250L or Rally. So as time of recording, these bikes are going for around 4K for a second-hand 250 Rally and around 3 to 3.5K for the CRF250L. But I'm sure as the 300 has come out, they'll start to slowly come down in price. It all starts in the listing. What has the bike got? Ideally, you want a bike to be as close to stock as possible. The only add-ons I would allow or want to see would be bash plate, hand guards, rear rack, and maybe an end can, depending on what one it is. Any CRF that has an EGK fuel injector or fuel computer thing, I would not bother. It could indicate the bike has been ridden on the red line all the time, or the bike probably misprogrammed or something and will have slight, is slight issues engine wise maybe later on down the road. My logic should be roughly the same as your logic here. You're looking at a Honda. Why are you looking at a Honda? Because you probably just want a solid reliable bike. And I've said it before, I'll say it again and I'll probably get a load of hate for this. If you want to go fast off road on the trails and stuff, just look at getting another bike. These Hondas are built heavy, 145 kilograms dry. It's good to go from A to B over whatever terrain or road surface it can handle, it can take it all. It will get you there, not the fastest, but it's reliable. They've sold millions and millions of engines with little to no problems. Just don't change it. I've heard a few horror stories of people getting secondhand CRFs that the engines were just worn because, well, the bike was running too lean or it wasn't programmed correctly. Airbox mods. You want to have a stock airbox. Stock. No holes. No remove snorkel. Tail tidy. No tail tidy. None. Depending on what one it is and depending on who installed it and how it's been done, okay, but... 90% of all the tail tidies that are on the market, water flicks up and there is a small gap in the back between the headlight here that forms because of the tail tidy and it will kick up and pick up all the mud and water which will go into this gap and slide lovely down towards the snorkel. Hopefully the snorkel is still there. If not, it will go straight into the airbox. Lovely. So like I said, hand guards, bash plate, rear rack. The rest, take a hard pass on it'll probably save you money later on so now you found so let's say for instance you found a nice honda crf 250 uh, and it's you know everything looks good in photos but you know online it can only show you so much you have to go check it out in person i mean the overall condition of these bikes i expect to see it beat up with scratches that's fine Make sure, if you're going to go check out the bike, do it in daylight, of course. Looking at a bike in the dark, probably not the best. It, look, these bikes are built tough, but you can get one that's not been regularly maintained. I'd possibly walk away from it. I mean, ask the seller about its service history. Did he get a dealership to service it? Or a mechanic? Or did he do it? I mean, you know, if you've got a Honda dealership stamp in every page, that's mostly ideal. And that would be the best situation because Honda generally would do the entire full service. If it was a run-of-the-mill mechanic, when he does a service, but he could miss a few things. Like, for instance, not lubricating certain parts of the bike, which on a Honda dealership or a Honda service manual, it tells you to take these parts take these bits apart and lubricate them and put them back together whereas a run-of-the-mill mechanic you ask him to do an oil change or do a service he'll do oils and filters and that's about it still a service still good for the engine but certain other bits may start to seize up and if the owner did it that's where you have to ask him what filters did he use did he use a K&N did he use standard uh, what oil did he use? Did he change the oil filter gasket and lube the rear foot brake? 
Ask about the fork seals, whether they've been replaced. It's very common that fork seals on these CRF 250s just go. They just they just go. Bef before I even had taken mine off road, it was still under a thousand miles. Mine just completely went. Um, it can happen really at any time, like under 5,000 miles from what I've seen. If it doesn't happen, then it won't happen with yours. I don't know why. It just It's a common issue which isn't covered under warranty, unfortunately. If the CRF is high mileage, then has its alternator had its day? If it's at mine went around 20,000, for instance. So if the bike's approaching around 20,000 miles, you probably might need to change the alternator. They spin all the time and they don't get very cool, especially if you're riding off road. So they're more of a habit to burn out. Often on forums and stuff like that, people do service the Honda CRF 250s. They don't change the gaskets that goes around the oil filter. But what they do instead is they tighten down the screws a bit harder, which can result in the bolt snapping or as the oil goes through a few heat cycles or gets older, it will start to weep out the sides. And if that happens, then it's gonna start spraying it back onto your rear disc brake. So you're looking at maybe a two or three year old Honda CRF. You can quickly do some non-invasive checks. Just think about it. It's two years old, maybe coming up to three, maybe three years on the dot. It's never had an MOT in this time. So just run down a quick MOT checklist. Just, it'll take you about 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes to go through all the little checklists, even print one off just to do a little checklist for yourself. Something like this. Bump test. Could be just that. It's going to turn back nice and smooth here. So you can just feel, you know, I'm barely touching the bike at all. But okay, so control. You can see, I've got loads of tread left, don't need to worry about that. There's no movement at all, left or right, up or down, nothing there. There's no movement like that, which is what we want, we don't want any of that. Exhaust, yeah, it's getting there, but it's not quite there yet, so that's fine. New disc is on there, and I've got new pads in there, so we know that's okay. Testing the wheel bearings. Okay, we're fine, we're fine. Just checking that, left or right, that is motion. You need to have the bike off the ground. Test the bike for brakes and judders. Headlamp aimed with the rider on machine. And you're really slamming on the brake and it judders. That could be ABS. Uh, my BMW 650 has overly aggressive ABS. Uh, it's the cheaper, older models of ABS. So try it at slower speeds or with the ABS off and it still judders. Then you've probably got a warped disc. I mean, I would do that for any bike that I'm potentially looking at to purchase. MOG checklist, nice and quick. Now, back to some more precise things with these Honda CRF 250s. Start by checking the front, the beak, the tyres. Now, the the bike possibly could be still on its stock tyres. A lot of them still are. And you really have to check them to see if they've started to perish because it is more common than you think. I mean, the, the stock CRF tyres are pretty dreadful anyway. But the bike could be a 29 CRF with 300 miles on the clock but them tyres could have been sitting in the sun in Thailand probably for four years before they even fitted to the bike. Then go to the side of the engine, check there's no oil weeping from the oil filter cover. I mean with the bike upright you can see the min max line, not too much, not too little. Measure the chain adjusters. If they're not the same length then the wheel probably won't be in line. The owner might have made a mistake, it needs slight correction. But what's more common is the chain adjuster bolts can seize. Hey, happened to me and a lot of other people have reported similar issues. It is most likely to happen in bikes two or more years old. They start to rust on the inside of the swing arm. Change them over to titanium and copper slipped and I've never had the problem ever since. Also check the chain. Now it usually happens to people running 13 front sprockets but it can happen if you're running a 14 front sprocket and the chain's too loose it will chew through the chain guide and then chew through the swing arm a few people not a lot but people are picking these bikes up second hand are reporting of them having to purchase a new swing arm because the old one has been wrecked by the previous owner who didn't tighten the chain up regularly 
but it is more common on 13 front sprockets because of the chain is even closer to the swing arm on a 13 front it's kind of why i keep it on a 14. now you're probably at the seller's personal place like the garage or whatever i mean you can have a quick look around their garage you can see the bike squeaky clean can you see a jet wash in the corner i mean yeah that was it was it cleaned regularly was it jet washed regularly and you know when you're jet washing a bike you shouldn't really do it you can but you have to be careful places where not to spray perhaps like the chain the bearings all that does all that psi of water just pushes dirt and grit past the seals or into the seals past the seals into the bearings chewing stuff up much quicker but any chewed up bearing stuff like that you might have felt that doing a quick mot check i mean look these bikes are tough but if they're not looked after right they don't stay that way so a few more things to check now but these are more invasive you have to ask the owner if it's okay take the key and open up the toolbox make sure it's there honda have a fantastic stock toolbox with their bike take it out make sure all the bits are there it's the same toolkit i use to repair mine on the trails it's amazing but to get that toolkit back from honda would cost around 70 quid so you want to make sure it comes with the bike then i'd even go as far to say can i just check a few things like the airbox it's only one bolt to undo the side panel comes away quite easy with this allen key it pops off then you can see the side of the airbox i would then take the screwdriver from the toolbox and unscrew these things you can check inside the airbox and check the air filter see the condition of that see if it's knn or stock um, also take out the air filter check inside make sure there's no dirt or oil now the airbox oil in the airbox it's not a great sign but it can happen if the bike is running while it's on its side or have been dropped or wheelied if it's a puddle of oil no walk away if it's like more of a residue then that kind of is acceptable that's that's not too much to worry about with the side panel off you can also see if the snorkel's there see how it is see how clean it is and stuff you really want to have a snorkel on these bikes another thing to check is if there's a lot of add-ons like heated grips usb ports you know then check the battery if you want with a voltmeter I mean, it's only five quid and it takes a sec to take off the other side of the panel check the other side of the bike the stock batteries they're not deep cycle if they're discharged all the way down once or twice that's pretty much the end of the battery and with these honda crfs the 2012 to 2020 20 models the crf 250s the way the fuel pump works they are impossible to bump start with a dead battery and very hard to bump start with a weak battery these bikes there's no warning if the battery is dying whereas other bikes you can slowly get them to whir into action and slowly turn over these will just nothing it goes from fine to dead battery not starting and it is very tricky to bump start a crf 250. now there's another little fault that goes around with about the cam chain tensioner but that normally happens really early on in the bike's life so they can fail but it is still that is really really rare and some people do change them to a manual cam chain tensioner i don't recommend the manuals because that means that you would have to keep checking to make sure that it's fine whereas if you just have the automatic one it just does it as it goes along most of the time these bikes only fail because of what the owner did usually there's very rare instances where these bikes do have catastrophic failures and of course once you get it i highly recommend fully servicing the entire bike take all the wheels off re-grease all the axles the chain adjuster bolts everything of course make sure the papers and the bike and the frame number i'm just saying all this because i'm sure i'll get some hate in the comments if i failed to mention that make sure there's a v5 with it etc or papers or whatever country you're from whatever their equivalent of a bike registration v5 is but if there's anything i've missed or any general tips 
I've left out and well please leave a comment below I hope that helps anyway anyway like comment whatever graph and I catch you in the next video ciao